Since we've applied a change to our process, now's a good time to review the revision history feature because it dictates the current state of the component and the version eventually deployed to production. The revision history is an available feature for all components and is displayed in the bottom right corner of the process canvas. It provides the ability to view and edit versions of a given component. It offers a simple way to overwrite invalid revisions similar to an undo. And each component has an independent revision history. Although we can reset revisions for a full process, the change will not affect subcomponent revisions. So basically the mapping connections, operations, etc., will not be rolled back if we choose to restore an older process revision. So be careful when applying these changes. Most rollbacks are performed within the map component. We currently have multiple versions of the process, so in order to publish our most recent changes, we need to deploy the latest revision of the process in order to be able to view alerts in the process reporting. Let's examine revision history together in exercise eight, and then we're gonna redeploy the process in exercise nine. So these are walkthroughs, so you'll be completing the activities with me. So to recap again, revision history displays the standard information about a component, including when it was last modified by a specific Atomsphere user. So this information is helpful when you need to undo changes at the component level and restore previous configurations. So in this exercise, we're gonna review a previous process version and note the changes. So on the build tab, we're in our process prospect tracking. So if you look in the lower right corner on, on the process tab, you can click revision history. We can review the current revisions and we can click edit next to our earliest revision. So this was the earliest revision done and we can view and edit that by clicking on it. So as you can see, this was the first uh, revision of prospect tracking that we had. The goal of this exercise is to make you aware revisions are never overwritten. Rather, they're stored in revision history if you ever need to reference or revert to them later. So saving a process version increments it and moves it to the top of the revision list, making it the active version. If you revert to a previously saved version and want to deploy it, you need to redeploy and schedule the process. So the reverted version does not inherit the deployed state or the schedule assigned to the most recent revision. So we're gonna click close and we're gonna close this without saving. So make sure you do not save the first because we do not wanna overwrite. So we're gonna close without saving. All right, that completes exercise eight, reviewing the revision history. So it's, we're gonna go over redeploying the process and viewing alerts and process reporting. So currently there's multiple versions of prospect tracking and the most recent version has not been promoted into production. To publish recent changes, it's necessary to redeploy the process. So once the process is redeployed, we'll be able to view alerts from the exception shape in process reporting. So we're gonna click on the deploy tab. And under developer one, you see prospect tracking. So again, I didn't check the box. I just highlighted prospect tracking the name and we're going to deploy this latest revision. So deploy latest revision of process. And then in our deployment notes, what we're gonna do is we're going to put in the changes that we made. So since we added an exception shape, we're gonna put in added exception as the deployment notes. And then we're gonna hit okay. Version two was created and it's our added exception. And it tells you the date deployed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Manage and Process Reporting tab. And what we're going to do is we are going to manually execute the process, prospect tracking. We'll select the atom and the process, and we're going to execute that. So it tells you at the bottom that process prospect tracking is started. And we can refresh 
and now you can see that process prospect tracking completed with an error. So our previous versions before the exception shape completed, but without an error. So now we have an error in that process. So we could look at the error message itself, which is the account ID that we asked for and the name. So this is what we set up in the exception shape to be displayed as the error message. And one of the things you can see here too is since it has a little person on here instead of the calendar, you can see that it was a manual execution versus a scheduled execution. Another thing we can do is we can click on the timestamp. And we can see that the connection, the Salesforce connection operation completed with two errors. We can click on those errors and the errors are the account ID, gene point and edge communication. All right, that completes exercise nine.